Hello everyone. So uh, today in this uh, lab session, uh, as you might have gone through my previous two lab sessions, I have uh, not not used any uh, verbal communication over those because I felt it was not required. But uh, the kind of configuration that we'll be doing today, I thought we we cannot ignore this part. We we need to have uh, you know side by side we I, I would need to say and speak and explain everything that I'll be doing here so what today we are going to do is we are going to configure an L3 out uh, for a bare metal server as you can see here so for this bare metal server which is connecting to uh, leaf 101 over interface 1 slash 1 uh, I have done the configuration for this part because uh, uh, in, in my uh, previous uh, lab session I have shown you how to uh, configure these tenants VRFs, bridge domains and how we can bind EPGs and then how we can configure uh, these uh, interface profile groups where we can set the speed of interface at 10G uh, keep LSAP as active CTP is uh, enabled on this interface and the VLAN that I'll be using on this interface so basically this VLAN is the one which is uh, which would be configured on this server as well to communicate to the ACI uh, leaf 1 or 2 now furthermore this server is it's a part of a physical domain which uh, is named as uh, PHY domain B and it is bound to a VLAN pool of 1300 to 1320 this VLAN 1310 falls in, in, uh, in between this pool and the AAEP that we talked about uh, I won't be going in, in more deep about what this AEP and what's the purpose of this AEP is so the AEP that we have configured is this bare metal server which is bound to this physical domain and would be mentioned uh, under the interface policy uh, group as well for uh, binding the interface with the appropriate VLAN and the uh, bare metal server okay so this is the kind of a configuration that I have already done on this part on this session uh, the main purpose of this video is uh, we are trying to give um, okay so let's say over this side of the router we have the internet connection and uh, what we are trying to do is what we are trying to achieve here is uh, we are trying to uh, give this server the connectivity to the internet like this okay so the server is connecting to 102 and the router which is giving the access to the internet is connecting to leaf 101 over interface 1 slash 2 now we will see how this L3 out configuration is done. Now, uh, in case now how uh, th there are uh, multiple ways how we can configure L3 out. Uh, by L3 out, I means uh, we are gaming. Uh, we are basically configuring an L3 EPG using which any other uh, domain or any other endpoint group or set of endpoints can access the layer 3 domain outside the ACI so it's basically the exit gate of uh, ACI for the EPG that we are trying to configure now this uh, will will understand how we do it so in this example I'm considering that uh, we are con we are, we are uh, uh, using BGP between ACI and the external router so this is the external router and uh, running BGP okay so uh, for BGP configuration between two L3 devices what we need on both the sides the bare minimum requirement to set up BGP neighborship between the two uh, layer two layer 3 devices the first and the very basic thing we have to enable the BGP the second important thing is we have to configure a valid router ID which would be the identity of the router for that BGP for that particular BGP instance or session 
then we have to define the AS number for uh, either of the sides here it would be a uh, here it would be I'll be considering AS number as uh, okay let me check what did I decide let me open my notebook hmm. okay so I am going to give this an AS number of 45,000 and uh, this side would be the AS number 40,000 okay and now uh, this uh, valid router ID this I'll be giving uh, this leaf node 101 the router ID of 11.11.11.11 .11 okay uh, and uh, the other thing is uh, we have to mention what family of uh, traffic would be uh, traversing this BGP uh, network so that would be address family IPv4 unique hast that will do uh, when we that you'll and you'll understand when you can configure it uh, the another most uh, another important uh, attribute that we need to make sure is same on both the sides of these of this link is uh, the timer BGP 70 70 here is the keep alive uh, time timer and 120 is the hold timer uh, which we can uh, use to to set up this BGP connection and uh, the interface one slash two here okay this interface here this will be I'll be configuring this as a routed interface so for L3 out in ACI you can configure a physical routed interface as well uh, routed sub interface as well and you can also configure an SVI as well SVI would be like interface VLAN which would be a virtual interface a virtual router uh, uh, routed interface you can say but in this case uh, to simplify things I'll be configuring uh, this one slash two as the routed physical interface all right uh, so the IP address for this one would be 10 1 1 10 24 10 1 1 10 24 okay so the interface IP for this interface here Ten one one ten slash twenty four would be the interface IP for this uh, one slash two. Now before I go further, I would like to um, actually apologize for this uh, lab setup because this is just a lab setup. I would not be able to actually verify this configuration because I do not have this router. But what I'll tell you is uh, at every step where the uh, BGP neighborship would be up where all these configurations would be done where you have to match the configuration on both the sides so you'll understand everything but because i do not have a proper lab setup so i would not able i would not be able to uh, verify you for this but okay so going further mm, okay so these are the six basic things that you need uh, to have to establish bgp uh, configuration between two l3 devices so uh, let's let's configure the l3 first and then we'll see how we can get uh, the server connect to the cell 3 to get to the internet okay so I have uh, made this sales uh, tenant already where we have that uh, bare metal server which is using NCAP VLAN uh, 1310 okay And this is connecting to interface 102 1 slash 1 the access policy is already configured the physical domain is the domain map AAP interface is 1 slash 1 and uh, this is the VLAN pool there are no contracts associated with it uh, we'll, we'll uh, talk about the contract shortly so the static port binding is given 1 slash 
1.0.2.1.1. It's running uh, 13.10. I'll change it uh, from on demand to immediate. So basically on demand to immediate means uh, on demand when we set it to on demand. So it would actually wait for the other side to communicate to start a communication and only then it will uh, initiate the connection from uh, ACS side. But when it's immediate, uh, whatever is the state from either of the sides, it will the connection will be established right away. Okay, so under this network, the first thing that, uh, that we need to configure is the external routed network. Now, this external routed network is the place where uh, all this information you know uh, okay where all this information external routed uh, policy I think policy what is it external routing networks so this is the place where uh, all these configurations will be configured so this is an L3 out I'll be giving this as a name of uh, uh, just L3 out routed network I'll do a right click create a routed outside so here I'll give it uh, L3 out external network okay now here the first step that we talked about is uh, enabling the BGP so this is the place where we get to enable the BGP and uh, under this BGP we can assign this VRF the VRF cells okay so what else we need to configure we'll configure only this part for now okay so this routed network L3 external network it's configured okay All right, so what next? Expanding that further, now what we need to configure here is for this external routed network, how we know uh, where this external routed network would be configured. So for that, we actually need to configure the logical node profile first. Now what does this logical node profile means? So logical node profile means the logical configuration in regard to BGP on leaf 101 would be mentioned here so under the logical node profile we have to mention node 101 let's do that create a node profile so that would be L3 out let's say 101 let's name it like that the BGP timers uh, we can configure here uh, what we divided BGP timers now we decided a hold timer of 70 and a hold sorry keep alive time of 70 and hold time of 120 keep alive would be 70 hold time would be 120 risk keeping everything else is uh, default so we'll submit the BGP timers are configured okay now here we configure the node Wh which node it's going to be configured on so node ID here it's 101 as we can see here 
101 is the node all right router id what we decided we decided at 11.11.11.11 .11 .11 .11. We can uh, configure a different loop back address as well. If in case we do not wish to have the router ID as same as the loop back address. So actually I'm going to make a different uh, loop back address. All right. Uh, why I'll, I'll talk about this uh, shortly so we have configured the we have mentioned the node ID for that node ID the router ID is 11.11.11.11 okay submitting it again if you open it again you'll see the uh, router ID okay now under this router ID we can uh, okay uh, let's let's uh, stop here for a while so when you need to configure a BGP let's see a standard BGP configuration between two L3 devices first thing what you do is you go inside the config mode you type router I'm sorry router BGP let's say for example here we are talking about uh, the autonomous system is 45,000 all right um, the router ID is uh, even though op uh, optional but we have given it okay so uh, what next uh, after router ID you mention uh, um, okay BGP it should be BGP router ID okay then you can define the timer which we have given 70 120 okay now we so there, there's one more point here that we can include which I would like to talk about is the network let's say for example 1.1.1.1 255255255.0 so when I when I configure this uh, network command it basically means that uh, this particular network it's local to this PGP autonomous system 45,000 okay so this is the main basic command which is uh, configured over here okay so this is configured here now in case of BGB what we need to do is we in addition to this uh, uh, local router configuration we need to configure the uh, the the neighbor details as well we need to mention on this local router what its neighbor uh, autonomous system and IP addresses and uh, address family are so in addition to these devices we have to configure these commands as well what this command is neighbor uh, like here the neighbor is uh, okay so let me let me mention that again uh, the IP address would be 10.1.1.11.24. This is the IP address for this interface. Okay. So neighbor. Neighbor. Uh, 
Okay, so what I'm doing here is uh, these three commands are also configured on this router. Why? Uh, using these commands, uh, we are telling this leaf 101 that your neighbor is basically the next hop IP which is the IP address of this interface of this router and uh, the autonomous system for this BGP the other end of this is 40,000 the address family is the same which you are also using which is uh, uh, address uh, family IP for unicast on this local side and on remote side as well is the same and when we type in this command that neighbor 10.1.1.11 activate then it basically started uh, start sharing its own routes to uh, with with this neighbor in the autonomous system 40,000. Okay, so this is what we are going to do here. So when we under this configuration BGP peer connectivity, we can mention the peer address. Like say for example. Uh, Mm, it what's what's uh, 10 one, one, 11 okay 10 one, one, 11 okay so this is the next stop self we don't need the password we don't need the weights private is control remote private is PR prefix policy we don't know that we, we don't need that now the remote autonomous system that is 40,000 a local autonomous system configuration uh, this is 45,000 okay now this is the place where uh, we are configuring the autonomous system the local is 45,000 the remote is 40,000 and that is done okay now uh, this is where you can uh, check whatever we have configured here. Uh, we'll we'll uh, go into details for this in maybe some other lecture. This is not uh, uh, currently in the scope of this, what we are trying to achieve here in the session right now. Remote private is okay. This everything is configured here. Now checking under the BGP protocol. Here uh, the BGP timers are configured. So what have we done uh, till now? Yet. Mm. This one done. This one done. This one done. This one done. And. Yes, the address family is pending. The interface IP for this uh, 101 1 slash 12, 1 2, this is uh, remaining. So we still haven't uh, done our complete configuration. So, uh, okay, now after we have configured this node, okay, this node is configured, we still do not see uh, where the interface is. So under this logical node profile, we have this logical interface profiles now this is the place where we get to configure the interface profile I'll just name it uh, I think interface 1 slash 2 yeah I'll just name it uh, L3 out 1 dash 2 I'm not going to configure any uh, GMP policy ND policy or anything like that so that keeping going next I don't need HSRP on this for now. Its scope is, uh, let's say, tenant. That is not required. DHCP, we are not using DHCP. Uh, this thing would uh, usually play uh, come in play when we are trying to configure an, uh, a multi port or multi site uh, configuration or something uh, uh, similar like that. But let, let's not talk about this for now. Now going next, next is, uh, okay, now here we get the information, uh, we get an option to configure a routed interface would be, which would be like uh, 
physical interface which would be routing the uh, BGP connection between the two devices or the routed sub interface like same server same interface uh, uh, hosting uh, several sub interfaces or the SVI like for example the any any interface VLAN that we can configure okay in my example I'm considering 1 slash 2 as the routed interface so I'll just add that code 101 1 slash 1 now comes the IP address what's the IP address that we have decided okay so 10 1 1 10 slash 24 10 1 1 10 slash 24 is the IP address we don't need to we don't have to give any secondary address for now mm -hmm. here we get to give the peer IP address now what the peer IP address is so peer IP address is 10 1 1 11 I believe yes 11 slash 24 next up shell self remote OS number S number is 40 thousand local is 45,000 okay okay finish all right so till now we have done uh, this part as well now let's see now we have configured the external routed networks everything related to BGP that we need now because we know in ACI everything and I mean everything in ACI is configured as an endpoint group so when we say the server is a part of an endpoint group L3 out is also in uh, kind of an endpoint group so whatever is connecting to ACI externally it can it, it, it has to be a part of endpoint group now that EPG can be a bare metal server, that EPG can be a VMM domain, that EPG can be an L2 out, and that EPG can be an L3 out. So now here we have to configure an L3 out EPG. And that is what I'm going to do now. I'll do a little thicker. So this here is L3 out APG All right so I'll name it create an external network L3 out APG now this is a subnet which uh, will be configuring uh, we basically want all these subnets to be advertised or imported uh, or should be they should be exported uh, external to the L3 out for example otherwise based on your infrastructure environment uh, requirements you can mention particular subnets to be advertised outside but here I, I wish to advertise everything that is uh, that is going to reach this L3 out so I'll just do everything okay about these settings as well uh, I have a separate uh, course that I have already shared so you can uh, check out my uh, that course where I'm mentioning all the properties for this uh, for every setting that we can see here okay so here we get the L3 out APG okay now see now comes a very important part we have this APG here this this right side so this part here okay this is all configured for this server the bare metal server this part here 
this all is configured for the L3 out connectivity the networks the EPGs the router IDs the PGB properties and everything else okay these are two different entities all together this gap here you see here let me draw that gap this is a bridge between the two we do not have any connection between the two yet so there are two things that we need to configure first okay what we need to do the first thing that we need to do is to define this bridge domain we need to make sure it's using this l3 out ebg then when this bridge domain is mapped to this l3 out we need to define a contract which would actually be allowing the connectivity from this router to this 101 leaf to this server so these two things will bridge the gap between these two attributes let's see how so when we go under the bridge domain uh, we get an option of uh, the L3 configurations okay here we can associate the L3 out which all the BG all the EPGs under this bridge domain will use to reach to the internet so first of all the subnet here this would be this we can configure uh, if, if we are uh, configuring the gateway for the EPGs on the fabric but we can keep it blank as well that's fine but uh, usually it is configured so we'll just configure it uh, let's say we have a 192.168.1.1/24 and uh, this complete network set is advertised externally and shared between VRFs so that it can reach to the net, uh, internet as well now under the EPG uh, sorry L3 out we see an option called the sales L3 out external network which is this network every setting here will be used by this uh, will be associated with this bridge domain okay so this part is done the other part contract part the contract because the L3 out is giving the network connection to the EPG the provider side of the contract would be at the L3 out and the consumer side would be at the EPG under this in uh, so this contract part is configured in this network we go into this network uh, this provider okay so before that uh, I'm going to configure the contract as well uh, contract would be it's a security concern so it would be under the security policy I'll do a L3 out contract scope is global I we can uh, set it to VRF in our example because we are uh, dealing with the single VRF in a single tenant but if you are uh, using this contract outside this tenant as well we can set this to global or based upon the, where we are going to use it we can set this to whatever option we have okay subjects would be like let's say ICMP ping connectivity I'm trying to give or, or maybe all hmm? so name would be let's say default right. directives none means everything is allowed so what is the problem with that okay alright so going back to this network L3 out EPG this will be providing the contract and the EPG would be consuming the contract now as soon as this is done your server would be able to reach to the network to the internet using 
and three out in the ACI. Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll uh, very quickly show you uh, the the these things that we have checked here over a CLI to give you a quick look how these things look in the CLI in ACI fabric. So before I began this session, I actually uh, took a brief running config. So we we had uh, okay. Let me show you on this leaf 101. Uh, there is no configuration related to what we have configured here. These are all the default configurations that that is present. Okay, no configuration for interface uh, one slash two that we have configured right now. No tenant sales is present. Present. Okay, nothing, nothing at all. So it's completely fresh. So let's first first check the running config of our tenant. Let's understand what it shows. So this sales tenant, there is a contract. The scope is tenant, and the subject is all. It's allowed both sides. We have a VRF for this tenant. Then we have an uh, external routed network L3 out. For that L3 out, this VRF here. This VRF is the member. Then uh, bridge domain is configured. That bridge domain is part of this VRF. We have application APG bare metal. It's a part of the bridge domain that we have at the above configuration. And the con it's consuming a contract. Then we have an external L3 APG called L3 out APG, which is a part of L3 out uh, external network, which is here, which is coming from here. Okay. Now VRF is part of this. Now it's matching IPs. Basically, if anything matches this IP, only that will be uh, allowed to use this external uh, routed network because I have set to any any. So basically, all the networks are allowed to go to go to the internet using this configuration. The contract it's providing the contract. There the interface bridge domain. Uh, this is what we have configured separately. This is not of our use. So that's fine. Uh, this is basically the IP address of the uh, the gateway that I configured. Okay, so it, it's not necessary for us now. So this is all. Uh, now we can check uh, show run leaf 101. This 101 is the leaf which is hosting the L3 out connection over BGP to the external uh, device. As we can see here, uh, uh, the BGP timers are visible. The timers BGP, okay. The VRF context, the router ID is configured uh, configured here. We have a route map here. Okay, this is the, uh, the route maps are default. I haven't included the route maps configuration in my session right now. Now uh, the IP prefix list, it's permitting everything, and it's matching bridge domain BDEPG. Okay. Now, okay, where is uh, yeah? So, interface one slash one. Was it one slash one? Or one slash two? It should have been one slash two. I did a mistake. Okay, I probably selected one slash one over there. I actually because uh, as per my lab. I actually wanted to select one slash two to make sure you know I'm, I'm uh, making good difference on both the sides but that's okay we could uh, we could have selected one slash two over there so that becomes a VRF uh, part of this VRF member the IP address for this interface is this so this is basically the routed interface okay no switch port it became the routed interface this router BGP neighbor details local autonomous system uh, don't confuse with this 65,000 
this is the BGP which is running inside the fabric so when this uh, server connecting on 102 it's connecting to uh, spines and going to leave 101 to connect to the internet there is an uh, MP BGP running inside the ACI fabric and for that I have actually set the autonomous system to uh, 65,000 let me show you where I have configured that under the port policies uh, wait. yeah okay so BGP route reflector this is the most important configuration that we need to have when we are uh, configuring an L3 out so that you know whatever routes are coming from one side they should be sent or learned on the other side so for that the spines have to be configured as the BGP route reflector otherwise it won't work so I have no, I added these spines here in the uh, route reflector nodes and the autonomous system here I have given is 65,000 so this is, this is the BGP 65,000 that you are seeing here but not the BGP that we are talking about that we are trying to configure here okay so for that BGP this VRF has become a me member it has inherited the BGP timers the neighbor details are here the loop address is here it's showing here the address family IPv4 unicast the neighbor details are here 10.1.1.11 okay so update source is uh, 1 slash 1 again uh, because I have configured this interface so it's coming here uh, as well the address family IPv4 unicast surface local AS is 45,000 remote AS is 40,000 and everything is done I hope uh, it would be helpful this session would be helpful for you so do mention your comments uh, below the video and let me know if you liked it so that I can make uh, and prepare more videos like this and if you guys want I can prepare an L3 out or uh, a uh, shared L3 out as well uh, there is a very little difference in configuring a shared L3 out the only difference is uh, this L3 part here this part would actually be configured on the tenant common and from that tenant common the contract would be coming to this EPG under tenant sales that is the whole difference but if you want me to prepare a session on that just write in the comments or just, just uh, visit my website send me an email I'll, I'll do that for you okay alright guys so good day for now